In other news, authorities in Donetsk are saying the city is on high alert despite a truce between the army and local militias. The reports of sporadic skirmishes continue to put a damper on peace efforts in the region. Maria Fenoshina brings you a first-hand report now on the reality on the ground. Travelling from Lugansk to Donetsk in eastern Ukraine is to pass between the two epicenters of what Kiev called its anti-terror operation. There is a ceasefire now, but still we take alternative routes. The way is worse, but much safer, the anti-government fighters say, and they insist on escorting us. There was never a ceasefire. None of the main roads are safe, but we know this route well. Almost every town we go through has suffered in the war. Almost every village saw death and injury. Fighters from both sides suffered, but so did innocent bystanders. Like in the town of Antracit. Yegor Alexandrov is among the youngest victims of Ukrainian conflict. He was just 10 months old when he died. It is not clear who is responsible for this little boy's death. His parents have little hope anybody will be punished for their loss. Just like many other deaths in this war, it will probably never be investigated. We see many checkpoints on our way, most of them abandoned. To us, it is a good sign that soldiers have believed there was no longer a threat. But the anti-government fighters see it merely as a sign that Kiev is withdrawing, rearming and remobilizing, ready to fight again. Several times we crossed rail lines, but we never saw a train. Are there any trains? No, everything is destroyed. But you are still working. Yes, we have started repairing our station after another shelling. We say goodbye and offer our best wishes that the railways and the lives of these people will soon be back on track. The petrol stations we see are also closed many destroyed out of service as we enter the donetsk region there are signs everywhere with warnings about the hidden danger of mines and then we reach what was likely one of the most targeted places in the whole of eastern ukraine saur Magila is the highest point in the entire region of donbass obviously it is a very strategic location with a fantastic panoramic view the two warring sides have been fighting for it for many weeks. Twice it was taken by the Ukrainian military, but most of the time it was under the control of the anti-government forces. Judging by what we can see here and from here, we can say that these battles were very fierce and very violent. Standing on this hill was a Second World War memorial, a soldier and a huge column in memory of battles fought between Nazi Germany and Soviet troops. They say up to 25,000 died back then. Now, all that's left is the bronze soldier's left boot. The other parts of the memorial probably now mark graves for modern soldiers. The Ukrainian army had their command and control center there, but the exit collapsed and nobody could get out. I'm sure they were trapped inside. Are you saying there are still dead bodies under the ruins? Yes. Flowers in several places mark known graves. They started shelling in the morning and it continued non-stop. They even bombed us from the air. Fighters are permanently stationed here, even now, when the shells aren't flying. So what do you think about the ceasefire? What ceasefire? They're gaining power to attack us again. Here in eastern Ukraine, you can feel that a lack of trust prevents people from hoping for the best. Because even if the war is over, what has happened is not easily forgotten. Marif Noshnati in eastern Ukraine.